Hey and welcome to Sekiro the Ultimate Guide. Now if this is your first time watching any of these videos then I'd ask for a minute or so of your time just so I can explain how to use this guide and what it's about. Essentially this guide is entirely complete and it will help you get a full platinum for Sekiro. It covers all NPC quests that are relevant, all items, a best path through the game and also specifically strategies to get you through the game with the path of least resistance. Remember that this guide is supposed to be used as a full guide but you, could, you can use it for specific areas if you need to but if you're confused about how you know we are at a certain point or doing a certain thing, chances are the answer is in a previous episode. When it comes to boss battles, we really only show you the easiest method that we could find based on our perspective. If you want to fight the boss differently, it's up to you in this case to find a different and harder strategy. Now, if you have a good tip or have a question, leave them in the comments and I'll add them to a pinned post. That way this guide can constantly get better or more efficient. So if you have a question, check the pinned post first. If you do have a tip, please leave a timestamp so I can find the bit that you're talking about. Also, please bear in mind that this guide is taking me literally hundreds of hours to make, so if you enjoyed the video, the least you could do is give it a like. If you really enjoyed it, perhaps give us a sub! And if you really, really enjoyed it, you can support the channel on our Patreon if you're feeling generous, or perhaps sub to us on our Twitch, that's another good option. Now on to the guide. So, welcome back to Sekiro the Ultimate Guide and today we're doing three different things. We are wrapping up the beginning part of the depths. We are going to finish the, like, one of the quest lines you need to do, just get out of the way. And then we're also going to do Sunken Valley and get a whole bunch of that done. So, we're going to travel to this bonfire, which I've, it's the things the depths, yeah. idol, whatever the fuck it is. Um, and this is the one that we unlocked earlier, just uh, at the abandoned dungeon episode just to kind of get out of the way so we have it so we're gonna uh i guess drop attack this guy you don't it's really stealthily to... make your way around because if there's a boss in this area and if they see you they'll just rush you and it's it's pressure you don't need yeah so the boss is actually he's like the same like basically the same boss as the gun fort boss the snake, snake eyes, eyes guy however you can't poison this one, so he's significantly harder, so obviously I'm going to show you the cheese method for that. Because, yeah, like, we can say, yeah, get good at it, and that just involves doing the boss, but in this case, like, so what you can do is you can take off um, uh, a bar of HP from the boss, though, so we're going to at least do that. And if you take care of those guys and the boss sees you, because sometimes, sometimes the boss sees you, sometimes they don't. Um, if they do see you, just quit out, reload, reset the boss position, and then you can just walk up to them and backstab them. So that's that's an, an easy enough thing to do. But then it means you actually need to do a full uh, bar of the boss's health. And oddly enough, this boss is actually so tanky at this stage of the game, they're quite difficult to beat with the axe. So we're going to do something even worse. We're just going to sit here until the boss poisons itself in the poison pool and um, eventually loses enough health that we can just kind of rush it and take off the last of it. Which is why this bit is sped up. Now, what's your thoughts on this, Stephen? <laughs> I knew about this, by the way. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. This, this was, like, shown day one when the game first came out. Oh, okay, Mr. Day One. No, it was. People figured this out immediately. And that's why I remember thinking, yeah, this boss should have, like, poison immunity, probably. Maybe well, they, they should almost patch that do. In. Yeah, it but... It takes a long time for them to get right. poisoned. But almost being immune to poison doesn't matter when you're standing in poison for, a, like, a prolonged period of time. <laughs> I mean, yeah, fair enough. I mean, look, that's, that, that, that almost poison immunity was great for that 50% of the health that just disappeared. So, you can just do this and take care of the boss. So, realistically speaking, if you're kind of watching ahead in the guide, you can come and do this earlier, but... Doing this before Genichiro, which you can do, doesn't actually net you more stats or more HP or whatever, because you still can't get, uh, there's like another two prayer beads that you physically can't get before Genichiro, so there's just no point in doing it before Genichiro, because you can't get, you know, you can't level up, so to speak. Um, now that Snake Eyes is basically dead, you can go up, hit him twice, and he'll, he'll basically die. <laughs> pretty much. It's not like their posture's going to recover at this point, so... The yeah. thing is, though, is that, like, you know, the boss, like, so what you saw there, though, is, like, hit, hit, uh, axe is pretty through, decent. Tank through their attacks with a fanging blade. You thought this was a dex build? 
thought this was a dex game. It is a dex game. That's why you're just winning. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the, the this is the definitive proof that strength beats dex. This is the the definitive proof. <laughs> cool. I'll edit that better then. Yeah, let their imagination decide what I said. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, um, we're gonna pick. We're just gonna do the item run here. So you want to come the specific route that we went just there because then you can backstab the cannon guy. Because for some reason it does like his cone of vision or whatever still won't reach to you fighting the boss. So that's pretty good. So it means that you're not gonna get canned the whole time. Because you really don't want that. So now we can repel up here, get this item, I suppose. There's like a bunch of all the items in, there are really, in a really awkward place in this area. Because uh, there's like some items in the poison bits. But well, once it's done, it's done, you know. And a lot of the items here are actually okay. It's like a lot of like upgrade materials and things like that. So it's that's stuff exactly, you actually want. It's not exactly Blight Town. <laughs> no, I mean, yeah, I guess. I guess. And like now you, don't even, you can't even get poisoned, basically. So that should be it. Oh, okay, there's, there's one more. There's one more item as well on top of the statue's head. Uh, yeah, I think we get that as well. But, yeah, that, that's pretty much it. So, another reason for doing this just now is if we do the Sunken Valley just now and then we beat the Ape Boss, if we then come here after that without coming here first, um, it means that you have to do another boss. And if the boss is particularly difficult for you, uh, you might just want to like continue on. So this allows you to get an idol that is past the boss that you can go to. So if you come here just now, there's no boss. But if you come here after doing the Sunken Valley, there will be a boss. So you want to just come here when there's no boss, go past it, get the idol, and that way if the boss is difficult, you can just continue on until you feel like you're ready for it. God, the wall jumping in Sekiro was terrible. Yeah, it's pretty bad, isn't it? So we can get some more yellow gunpowder, and up here there is another prayer bead. So this would be the absolute... Well, I mean, I guess theoretically, right, if you really wanted to, you could come here, get these two prayer beads, and then continue on. Like, so you can still technically get nine heals before Genichiro, but it's just not worth it at that point. Like, the amount of hassle and effort is just ridiculous. You might as well just... You'd be good enough to beat Genichiro if you were able to do that. So yeah, time, that, so. that was pretty much my logic. Because you need to go all the way through, like, Mibu Village and stuff, which is the part that we're coming up to. But we're not going to do yet. We're going to do Sunken Valley first, because it's kind of, you know, the more scaled yeah. for this part of the game. And you don't have to worry about the big monkey. But it's just interesting how much you can do before Genichiro. And I guess it's just something to mention. You can come here and you can do this. And you can get another Gourd Seed if you really want to. But it's more hassle than it's worth. So now we're going to the Gunfort Bonfire. This is now the the quest line that we're going to do. This allows us to um, access one of the endings. And basically this involves killing a god. It's fine, just natural everyday stuff for a FromSoft game. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. So you want to jump off and then do the physics bend and repel. Because if you jump off and you land on the ground, it's, it's high enough that you end up taking damage. You even take damage from jumping in the water there, kind of. <laughs> but I mean, I guess it is like technically oh, realistic. There's, there's a snake, by the way. Yeah, so that was uh, a. <laughs> yeah, because um, there won't be any like you probably won't be able to hear the background noise. Yeah, so we're just cut. We're just coming to here like immediately to get this bonfire because we need to like warp back to it. Um, and now we're going to go to Senpu Temple to do that. Um, you know the thing that we said where you like take control of the guy or whatever, that's the, the quest line that we're doing just now. Oh, we're having ninjutsu now? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So you get that after Genichiro. So you can't do this until you do the Genichiro. Yeah. So what you need to do is you need to go to your ninjutsu and uh, equip the puppeteer, puppeteer one. That's what it's called. And then this guy will do what you ask him to. So when the prompt comes up, press R1 after you do the backstab, and then he'll just like go up there. Now, something that is kind of odd. You can go through loading screens and this guy still stays here. So you can like... I think it's the, the kite position stays. Uh, no, because when he moves away from it, it, it like reels back in. Oh, okay. So for some reason it just sticks about. It's uh, it's useful at the very least. 
And it's like the only instance of something <laughs> he like that. He's not happens. subject to the laws of time and space, is what you're telling me. He's not, he's not. So we're just gonna warp uh, to. Oh, fuck, I can't actually, I can't actually remember. It is. Uh, Shigendo. So that's the side of the mountain bonfire. Yeah. yeah. And then this is like the closest we're gonna get to the repel point. So you remember this bit? This would require going through like half of the mountain if you were to just run. And you can just run past all the enemies, but this, I guess, is marginally easier. Because you, there's like no enemies really to run past. Because you can go on the roof and then jump up here. So then what you need to do is there's the kite. So again, that's like two loading screens. And then you yeah. can just like bound all the way over here. I like how you don't take any damage from that fall. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's only it's only it's only if you press the X button that you get subject to gravity. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Like that like you fine. Is that what? 100 feet drop? I could it's do it. It's nothing. He's a superhero. It's the only thing I can think of. Or that sculptor's got a really fucking good screwdriver. <laughs> <laughs> Best screwdriver in the land, bro. So there's a, an idol here for, I guess, no just reason. <laughs> convenience sake if you manage to fuck this up, I suppose. So now you get to do a big drop attack on the snake. And by doing the snake now... Um, well, I guess the snake never really comes up later on. By the way, this is one of many snakes. There isn't just one. I think there's like three, technically. No, there's two. There's two snakes. Oh, well, no, because there's this one, and then there's the one... Like, the other one that you... Right, I think the the one that you stabbed in the eye is the one that's down in the caves. I don't know if that's true. I think it is the one down in the caves. Well, there's either two or three. That's what it is. Because there's only two serpent viscera, and there is a dried serpent viscera, which is the dead snake. The one that's been dead for a while. So there were three at some point, I'll give you that. Sure, wait, what one's been dead for a while? Well, that's what the dried serpent viscera was, it's like a dead snake heart. Because you get the serpent viscera from killing a live snake, you get fresh serpent viscera. Well, whatever. Not paying enough attention. You don't need to pay attention to any of the items in this game, they don't do anything. It's true, they don't, uh, which is kind of the worst thing about the game, but... Uh, well, so these ones do, these are ending items, but otherwise... So now we have gotten those key items that gives us access, well at least we're starting to get access to one of the endings. And that's pretty much like all the kind of side wrapping up stuff that we're going to do just now. Now we're going to continue on with like actual progress. I mean I guess the wrapping up stuff was still technically progress. Well, you did unlock an ending. Yeah. So... But, uh, so, and the thing is, is the ending pertains to, like, the Platinum, so this is something that you actually do need to do. It's like an actual quest that, like, gives you a tangible thing, or is about as tangible as a trophy is going to be. Yeah, until the downfall of civilization and PlayStation is nothing. Aye, right. Then, so then you'll lose the Platinum, but until then, <laughs> you've got something. <laughs> <laughs> I love trophy hunting. I love it. Just not, not doing it. The idea of it is funny. So, uh, we'll continue on now, get some adamantine scrap, and this is, this area is a lot more confusing than it actually ends up being, for some reason, jumping Just up jump here. up the fucking rock, man. <laughs> Can't do it, right? So have your shurikens equipped, because there's, like, a bunch of monkeys that you need to, like, kind of deal with. There's one up there, which you just kind of hit down and kill. He's subject to gravity, but only if he doesn't let go by his own villain. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. So you can drop attack this one. So this is like the correct route to take through here, and you can just kind of like quickly run through if you bound over to the other side, but this gets you like all the items which are vaguely useful I guess, about as useful as they're going to be. So this is the bridge that takes you to the other side of the valley, but on this side, which I guess is the left side, we're going to do some stuff. Um, I'm, I'm just kind of showing you the orientation here though. So there's like a couple of like lookout monkeys that we're just going to kill just now to get them out of the way so they don't spot you later on. There's also like a lower level to this valley and that's like the next part but that'll be in the next episode. Is the lower level the one with all the poison and the yeah. white monkeys? Don't worry, it's a very, it's a very short Oh god, I hate area. it so much. Yeah, it, it, it kind of just it sucks. So much. It's the worst area. but at least it's not this area. Yeah, at least. So use your shurikens to like angle the camera so you can like take care of like the monkeys that are like sitting down here. And uh, that's pretty much it. There's only like four or five monkeys left at best. 
Yeah, it's like the, the way of getting items is a little confusing because you need to like come round and like drop down to certain parts. So actually, I might like drop off that things like the big statue's lap, but it doesn't really matter because I, I still get the item anyway. Special just... enemies can show up here as well, can't they? Little ghost boys. I have what? I've never heard of that. Um, there's a point in the game where oh sure like, yeah spectral like enemies appear. Um, they can appear here. Yeah, it, but that's it. Only ever becomes relevant in two bits of the game because yeah. you never need to backtrack. Yeah. So okay, so now I remembered that I missed like one item. So this is like you go on the lap here and then you drop off and there's like an echo sugar. I'm sure. Yeah, there's like a platform down here, and then you can repel back up again. So you don't need to worry. And that's like kind of. You, you, I'm pretty sure you can get. I mean, this, it's kind of hard to get confused at this point. This is like hardly Blight Town. I don't mean to overly yeah, explain it's, it. It's a corridor. So, uh, yeah, it's like little spectral versions of these guys can show up. I think. Uh, yeah. So that I can't remember what point in the game that happens, but it only ever happens like three times. Three times in the game it happens, and you just avoid the enemies anyway. They're just you just don't. I think it's after you kill the first corrupted monk. I think you. No, 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 because they show up before that. So now we can move over to the other side here. No, the one before Corrupted Monk. What's his name? He's not even a fucking boss. The, the one who, like, dispels the illusion in the woods. I think it's him. Something like that. So this is, like, actually a good point for using your Mortal Blade technique, oddly enough. Which is, um, it's like a, it's not like an AoE attack, but you do a big swooping slash and it does pretty decent damage. So you can use your shurikens to, like, take care of, like, an amount of the monkeys. You also or have Whirlwind Slash. You do it, which then doesn't take up any uh, emblems as well. So you can use Whirlwind Slash, you can use Mortal Draw, but personally, I found that Mortal Draw was actually like a little bit better. But you need to be careful because sometimes, if when you go to use it, you'll accidentally just do the grab attack and kill them, as opposed to just using Mortal Draw, and it just does this massive sweep, kills like a whole bunch of them in one big go. So you know what they killed though? The frame rate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you um, might win, but they get the last laugh. <laughs> They get you down to a blistering 10 FPS. That's like 3 or something, honestly. Look at that! <laughs> it's fucked. I mean, I've got a 1070 as well, which, I mean, it's not insane, but like... Like, fucking hell. This monkey just destroys the frame rate. So you know you'll kill them all when you get the monkey booze. You know you could have puppeteer ninjutsu, the one with the gun? Monkey with a gun will always win. <laughs> <laughs> Gunky? Yeah. You, um, could, you could have um, puppeteered him and then he uh, just started firing at his own guys. So now we are going to jump across the ravine to get like the last item. Um, I don't know what I'm doing just now. Do you come back here later with a beast whistle and make a civil war happen? Uh, no, because it's just never relevant. It's, I mean, it it's isn't. relevant in some points, but it like, it's just but doesn't... It's hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> it's so funny. And then it also kills your frame rate even worse because all of them start attacking each other. <laughs> So we do use the Beast Whistle a couple of times in the guide though, so it's not like a completely like, yeah. relevant item. But it's also like not something that you can like miss, so it's not like a, like, oh, I'm, you know, I've got like a, good, a cool tech or whatever, you just get it obligatory for doing the next boss. Yeah. Now I'm just going to mention here, so just follow what we're doing, but before we go into this next boss, I want to just make a, a point about how the techniques that I saw for the boss were very much like, Oh, you know, wait for this certain opening and like you want to attack it at this point and you'd spend like ages running about and What this does is the longer you're in a boss fight And this is like a technique that we use a lot the longer you're in a boss fight the more chance you have of fucking up The more chance there is for variance So my strategy for this upcoming boss fight is to just fuck it as fast as possible and honestly it is it, it, it means it's one of those situations where if you die, it doesn't really matter because you only spent like 30 seconds trying to do what you're trying to do. Whereas if you, you know, you're waiting for the opening and, you know, you're there for like 10 minutes and then you die right at the end, you're just like, fuck's sake, you're so annoying. So this is actually, I mean, not only is this easier in my opinion, it just saves a lot of like, not like heartache, but just kind of hassle if you fuck it up. And this also leaves a lot of less room for error. So to fuck the boss, we're going to use the flame vent. And we're also going to use oil, and we're also going to use uh, the long spark, and we're also need the spear for its second half. And then, uh, so to make it a bit easier, it might be worthwhile just equipping the flame vent and the uh, the long spark. And then when it goes into his next form, yeah, there is a next form. You can then just equip the spear, and you'll see why. This way, you can just switch between the flame vent and the spark easily without having to go through three. So remember, remember to equip the oil. This is very key. 
because it means that you'll set the monkey on fire immediately. And then you can just, you go in when you're close, take an Ackle Sugar, take an Ungle Sugar, and then go to fucking town on it. But there is a bit of a... Spank that monkey is what he's saying. So, I mean, yeah. <laughs> but what you do, right, wait for the opening, oil it, right? And then when it does its first attack chain, use the flame vent, make sure it's on fire. Uh, but you need to make sure that he's not in the middle of an attack animation. You need to get the set on fire animation. And you, you'll see... I'll point it out when we get it. I actually fucked up using the flame vent the first time. So... You want that. You want this animation. Then you swing into it. Make sure you switch the, the, the long spark. And then when it comes out of that, you then hit it some more. And then when you hit it enough times... Look, down to half health already. Then you'll hit it again... And then you'll stagger it, and this essentially lets you get like three attack chains. One where it's on fire, one from the long spark, and one from staggering it. All in like one go. Just do this. It's so easy. Because it's literally just like oil, R2, mash R1, use the long spark, mash R1, it'll get staggered, and then we just do it again. As you can see, very, very easy to replicate. And I'll tell you, this boss is the... This boss is such a hurdle. <laughs> I love that he still got you. I know, it's his fucking last laugh. I know. Last fucking laugh. And he's going to throw some shit at you as well. <laughs> and he got you with it. I need to get, like, one fucking chunk of health off it. And then I was like, yeah, there you go, fuck you, right? So you need to make sure that you have at least a few emblems. Four literally is the minimum. Uh, ideally, probably six would be the ideal amount to have left over. So you get the you get you kill the boss and then the fucker stands up again. But if you're like at least any amount competent at the game, the second half is way easier than the first half because all you need to do is deflect his attacks. And that might sound daunting if you're super dog shit at the game like me, but this boss this form is very, very easy to deflect. Now, when he does that kind of like Lur lurching up to the side, he's going to use a kind of terror attack. You want to run away from that AoE attack. It'll one-shot you. So, uh, deflecting is super easy. So, there, that, when it does a sort of, like, regularly it, move. Snakes. <laughs> you, you'll you learn to know the tell, because it's kind of hard to, you know, uh, point it out specifically, but deflecting its attacks are super easy, and, you just, and there's just one attack that you specifically want to deflect. If you deflect three in a row, it goes into that attack as well. Interesting, interesting. So if you, because each time you deflect, it will stagger its attack slightly. So, so remember to jump over these kind of swoopy attacks, and that's like, I, I can't believe I fucked that one up. But. That was the wrong button. You fat finger so, dodge. Deflect, deflect, and then it's going in yeah. for it. You want to deflect this attack, it goes down on its like knee or whatever, and then you use the spear, and then you pull out the big fucking worm that's inside it, hit it a few times, and then that is it. You just repeat this exact process until the boss is dead. Hitting it with the spear and the worm deals a fuckload of posture damage. Look yeah. at that. That was like a quarter of the posture bar instantly. And then you're about to get terrored here. Oh, you just made it. Yeah, yeah. So now, if that had filled his bar, he'd have died. Now, the good news about uh, doing its first form is ideally you want to use maximum like one or two heals. But the thing is, is that this form is also like Super duper easy. See, you deflected three attacks and you went right into that. Uh, so deflecting, again, I, need, I, need, I cannot stress enough, deflecting this thing's attacks is so, so, so easy compared to every other enemy in the game, basically. And then that is it. That is how you beat this boss. And honest to God, just rushing the first form, this is like one of the bosses where it's like, this is the reason why you're picking up all the Ungo Sugars and the Akko Sugars and the oils and shit like that. So you can fuck this boss in 30 seconds. And it's very, very simple to do. It's really upsetting that the boss's body disappears because you have the mortal blade. You could just have instantly killed him at this point and there wouldn't be another monkey fight. But there is because his body disappears. This is true, actually. This is a good point. The only reason you have a second monkey fight is because they don't expect you to have the mortal blade the first time you fight him. So hopefully uh, this this was specifically useful advice for beating this boss. And I personally, like, I've tried all the other methods and I was like, this is taking way too long. Can you actually just kill it immediately? And yeah, yeah, you just kind of can. So that's definitely the, the way I would suggest going about it. Like, you don't even need to be... 
nuanced. You don't really need to learn its fucking attack patterns because if you're able to just get that one hit in, bang, half its health is gone. You do it again, bang, half its health is gone. Now, this is the other footage that I had. I think this one's a little bit rougher or this is a completely perfect example. One or the other, I can't remember. Um, but this is just showing you that these results are... It's not like a kind of high roll type thing. This is very, very replicatable. And even if... I, I don't know if this is a fucked up one, but regardless, um, I just want to, to show you that it's easy enough to do. You need to learn how to dodge his doo, -doo. Just run underneath him. So you, when, he, when he, like, puts his hand in his ass to pull out the, the block, just run straight at him, because when he jumps into the air, if you get under him, he can't hit you. So there we go. On fire, we switch to the spark. When he's coming out of this on fire animation, we spark him, he goes back. Uh, try not, like, move to the side when he does that. And then we stun him, and then we just wail on him again, and that is half his HP gone in one combo. And then he runs away like a little bitch and squares up afterwards. And he's still got you. <laughs> so I think this is probably one where it, it is, like, sloppy, but the thing is, is that... You can afford to be sloppy because all you need to do is get the oil and the flame vent on him, and that's it. He's like trapped. So they are oiled. There, he done the he done the, the attack that you want. Then you wail in, switch to the long spark. At this point, uh, R two. Get poisoned. <laughs> uh, so that's why I said move to the side because it will. He does he does slam down. But again, in that combo, you've hit him enough times that you'll stun him again. And it, is, it really just is that easy for Form 1. And it's almost impossible to die to Form 2. Because as long as you just, you're just you deflecting attacks, Form 2 means nothing. So you can just waste all your heals being as sloppy as you want on Form 1. Form 2. Deflect, deflect, deflect. Uh, use the spear. There you go. Done. Jobs are good. It's a shame that this boss was like... Very... Uh, like, if you don't like, know about this, it's basically impossible. No, I know. Like, that's, that's, that's what I was about to say. Like, he's quite difficult otherwise. Yeah, yeah. Because his his first stage, anyway, is, is much, much, much more difficult than this one. So there you go. Deflect. Uh, deflect. Yep. And then the third one, we'll put him into this attack every time. And then bang. Spear. And that's a third of his posture inflicted in one go. His posture doesn't recover quickly, even though his health is above 60% oh, as well. Yeah, no, absolutely. His he doesn't, doesn't suffer from that mechanic like other bosses do. Like, the human bosses all suffer from that. You want to chip away at them and then inflict posture damage, but this guy, you just want to beat the shit out of him, you know? Now, because I only had um, three emblems, it means that I have to hit him in between these attacks to increase his posture, because I can't get the fourth... Um, the fourth spear in. So if you only have three emblems, then you, I guess, have to, like, after you've used the spear See? on him, hit him a few times. See, if you deflect, so it's two of his attacks. If you deflect two of his attacks, his third row. attack will, all, not not even in a row, you just deflect two of his attacks. Um, as long as you don't block one in between. If you get deflect to deflect, even if he misses with one in between, sure, sure. his third attack will go into that slam down. It definitely seems it, yeah, yeah. So yeah, I thought it was three, turns out it was two. So delete that fucking comment. <laughs> <laughs> so th there you go. And now we're back at the temple and I think we probably upgrade something. Oh, I guess we will install the uh, the monkey's whistle. whistle. Yeah. And give the sculptor the finger. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 it's like an item that is totally useless except in two places. Uh, no, because you use the you use the finger whistle for uh, bait and guards and stuff. So that is one thing oh, I actually did mentioned. You? Well, so the finger whistle can yeah, duh. I just never used it because shuriken also baits guards and it does damage. Should also mention that the whistle will bait guards to your position, and we use that an amount of times uh, in the later parts of the guide. So now we are going to upgrade. Uh, we're going for sculptor's karma scars. Get some more emblems. Always good. I guess I just never considered using it because I'm like, well, I'm fine just blocking and killing things. Yeah, I guess. I mean, more emblems means more axe. This so. is like if you want to play fucking Metal Gear. Yeah. So it is. This is like on a corner and you just hit it with a little whistle. I guess I should like pick a fucking stance. Am I using the axe or am I using the whistle? Why not both? Just whistle for a guy to come out and then just... <laughs> <laughs> fire into him with a fanging blade. So anyway, that is it for the Sunken Valley Part 1. Uh, next part will be Sunken Valley Part 2. 
Hopefully you enjoyed that, and hopefully it was helpful. Catch you guys later.